What's going on fishy friends? Rich here, Rich's Fishes. Got my little helper with me today. And we got an unboxing video. Who doesn't love unboxings? All right guys, so here's what we got. Nice big box from FedEx with a big giant perishable label that has been uh, left on my doorstep today. And let's open it up and see what's what. I'll bet nobody's gonna be able to guess what it is. It's not typically what I might unbox, but I figured, got something new. We'll open it up on camera, grab our trusty knife. And let's see what we got. More packing material. <laughs> we'll save that one for later. This is all stapled up. Empty box. Don't need that anymore. <laughs> this is like two unboxings in one. I opened the box and I have another box. All right, that's it, we're all unboxed. Oh wait, you guys probably wanna see what's actually inside, huh? <laughs> nice insulated container with more packing material. Don't need that anymore. And what we got here is some live black worms. Can we see them moving around? It looks like a big pile of mush right now. And a nice super cold ice pack. Ooh. Wow, this is... Oh, my. It's like a big giant chunk of ice. It's like... I actually don't know what this is. It's like gelatin ice. There's a big rock solid hard chunk of ice in the middle there. And on the outside, it's like a gelatinous ice cold material. Now, so what we got here, like I said, are live California black worms. This is supposed to be an eighth of a pound. Um, sure does look to be rather on the small side. and I see a little bit of movement in the bag. Everything looks live. No, I've never dealt with live black worms before. I think I understand the process. And what we got here is a worm keeper from California black worms. So this is like a sieve with some netting and the worms will stay in here and you fill the bottom with some water. Now I think the idea is that you have to use cold water uh, and dechlorinated water. And I don't have any cold dechlorinated water. So what I'm going to use is some bottled drinking water. First, I'm gonna rinse my hands because I feel all wet and sticky. And I am gonna to try to rinse these guys out using some nice cold bottled drinking water. This bottle's already been open. Ah, delicious. And let me think now. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Let me pause the camera and move it uh, over by the sink, I guess. All right, so we're over by the sink, and I guess what I'm going to do is take the bag and dump it into the worm keeper here. I don't know how I'm going to get all the little stragglers out of the corner of the bag here. None of this is probably showing up on film either. I'm probably a little too far down. The black worms need to be rinsed daily. Uh, in theory, I should be able to keep these guys alive for two or three weeks in a refrigerator and this worm keeper here and feed them as necessary to the fish. Boy, there's, there's a whole lot of worms left in this bag that I'm not 100% sure how to get out easily without making a big old mess. Somebody right now is watching me going, what in the hell are you doing, you idiot? There's a much better way to do this. I don't know what that better way is. So, the little one says punch them. I don't think that's a good idea. Now we got worms floating around here. Now, ideally, I just wanna run this under the tap, but I don't think that's right. So if my helper can get me my bottle of water, okay. without knocking over the camera, please. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna rinse. 
and you rinse away all the dirty stuff and this is what you have to do every day rinse these worms with nice clean dechlorinated water like I said it could be tap water that's been dechlorinated but I don't have any dechlorinated tap water that's cold and then all that gets rinsed out and then I'm gonna have to add water into the bottom of this so that way the worms get covered in water and stay alive another bottle of water helper Okay. and now you can see them moving around because you're my helper today now this is uh, I'm gonna have to come up with a better water source because this is going to certainly not be the most economical way to do this and we believe the idea is you fill the container so that way it's just barely covering the worms one more bottle this is definitely not the right way to do it using bottled drinking water Alright, assistant. <laughs> yeah, that sounds better. And you can see on the side of the container there that the water is not quite yet to the bottom of the sieve. So I guess that's right. Just enough water to cover these guys so they don't yeah. try to escape. And can we see the movement in there? Now the cold water slows their metabolism and that's the idea of keeping them in the refrigerator it slows down their metabolism so that way they don't end up dying on you and so that way they're not looking for food sources and things like that so now let's see if i can't you know what else i got in the mail recently it was a couple of new cone worm feeders these are slightly different than the other ones i've used in the past um, which have the floating ring instead of the floating ring you get a suction cup that just fits onto there for these guys so let me get the camera off the tripod and see if we can't go feed a couple of fish um, I'm curious to hear everybody's thoughts if anybody has used live foods in the past and specifically black worms um, I know some people say they are afraid to use these because of parasites and things like that. As far as I understand, black worms won't carry parasites that can be harmful to fish. They're not like tubifex worms, um, which are literally grown in human waste. But you do want to remove anything that looks like it's not a worm. I think you can get other things maybe like leeches which is what this could be right here if the camera will focus on it Let's see if I can get a hand behind it without spilling anything I think that might be a leech or the remnants of a leech perhaps I don't know but I don't want it and I certainly don't want it in my fish tanks yes babe I don't think you're going to want to touch them, baby. Okay. Alright, so the worms are squiggling. Okay. I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and we'll start feeding some tanks. Alright, so here's what we got in my juvenile grow out discus tank. I put that cone feeder right there next to the, well, right at the top of the tank and the fish are already migrating towards it. And what I'm going to do is take my tweezers and just grab some worms. Oh, that's a whole bunch of worms. And you can see them squiggling around there. And let's see oh, one's if they'll out. start poking out. Oh, now the one's fish are finding out. them. One's getting out. Guys, thank you. Fish don't seem to love it as much as I expected they might. They don't know they don't know what this is yet. They've never had live black worms. These fish have never had live food at all, actually. Maybe I threw baby baby brine shrimp in this tank once or twice, but it's probably gonna take them a little while to figure this out. I bet if I had let the worms free into the tank, there you go, they're squiggling out of the side now. Yeah. Oh worms like really getting it. Yeah, they're wiggling. They're trying to get out. I but believe they will live in the aquarium for a, a decent amount of time, actually. I don't want to say indefinitely, necessarily. Oh, got out. So 
see if anybody finds that. Oh, it's eating it! Ow, another one get out! I'm just showing them all the ones that can't get out. Oh, another one! Oh, and another one. So slowly but surely, the worms work their way out of that cone feeder. Which is good. And it looks like the fish are enjoying them. They haven't yet figured out that they can probably go up and, and actually eat them right out of the holder there. Oh, oh, another. Right there. Are they like blind? Oh, another and another. I feel like fish are blind. I don't know, baby. They see the food and they go and eat it. They're, no, they're just looking at where I'm pointing. Well, they eat all the worms as they fall. So slowly but surely. Oh, another. They'll oh, find another. these worms. And they'll gobble them up. So I'm going to go ahead and drop some of these another. into all my other tanks. Let's see where I already have some worm feeders sitting in a tank. Over here in my German Blue Ram tank. Oh, I'm asking for trouble, but you're trying to balance the worms on the side of the sink there. All right, I'm going to take a smaller dose and drop them up here into my German Blue Ram tank. Let's see. Ooh, Let's see if the rams find them. Oh, one. One kept it while it was still going out yeah. and ate it. All right, the female found them. Yeah. There's one. Come on. Eat it. Come on, boys. Oh, now the male found it too. Boys and girls just eat it. Now, let's see, where else do I already have worm feeders? Not in mine. In a tank. Let's go over this way. Over by the angelfish. Let's see. Well, first what we'll do is we'll put some down here in this discus tank. I suppose that's true. But if right. we were, that would just be weird. It'd be weird if we were fish? Yeah. All right, and up here into the angelfish tank. Oh, they're getting out good. They're getting them good. They still the school of fish, but they aren't following each other. Yeah, it looks like these worms are a hit for everybody so far in the fish room. Oh, look, they almost ate all of it. Yeah, we're going to have to put a little more in there for them. Now, I think the idea with live black worms, along with a lot of other foods like this, is that you don't want to spoil your fish and give them nothing but black worms, because then they might refuse other foods. They might get accustomed to uh, just eat black worms. to the live black worms. Oh, great! Now I got duckweed. What? Into the black worm container, which means that's going to grow in there now. I have to figure out how to get that out of there. Let's go rinse the duckweed off of the tweezers. Let's see. I could have sworn I had more of those cone feeders around somewhere. Well, I'll go ahead and add a few more into a couple of the tanks. And then I'm going to start supplementing everybody's diet by adding in these live black worms once in a while. I suppose it's not necessary to use the cone feeder. I could probably just drop the worms into the tank and that would be okay. Um, but I like the idea of keeping them contained. 
Well, the angelfish are going to knock the cone feeder right out of that little holder there. That's how furious they're going after him. Dad? Yes? Do you want me to get out the duckweed or whatever it's called? No, you can leave the duckweed in there. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. All right, live foods are definitely a hit, and I'm, I'm not surprised by that, but like I said, I've never really used live foods in my fish room before. I did start uh, some cultures of vinegar eels and micro worms and things like that. Those are set back there in the back corner of the fish room, cultivating. I figured that wasn't something worth videotaping. Rinse off the tweezers again. And I think that's about it for all the camera work today, guys. Oh, there's that big malapisto. Damn it, he was just right there. Probably throw some worms on that tank also, because the epistogramma should like that. Um, we got black worms hanging out of the feeder up here. What? Where? And making their way to the bottom of the tank. Squiggling around down there on the substrate. Wriggling around as they're getting eaten by the female ram. I see one on the log. Oh, never mind. Oh, wait, it's the log. And now there's a few more dropping out of the, out of the feeder. So hopefully all the fish enjoy this as much as I enjoy watching it. I'm surprised how many live ones are down here on the substrate that aren't getting picked off yet by these two. But like I said, I'm pretty sure they'll stay alive for a decent amount of time in a tank. Um, they are an aquatic worm, you know, so they will stay alive on the water, and that's why you want to keep them in that worm holder thing. You want to keep them submerged in water. And you want to make sure that you don't feed any uh, any dead worms to any of your fish. I don't think that's a good thing. And I sure hope this doesn't cause any problems uh, with parasites. I have seen some people talking about how problematic that can be, but that seems to be a phenomenon that used to be a problem. And for some reason, the impression I get now is that that's no longer a problem. I hope I'm not being foolish by assuming that. Had some more eggs down here in the ram tank the other day, but they don't look like they are going to make it at all. As a matter of fact, I'm not 100% sure they were even fertilized. They were already white by the time I put them into the um, specimen container. No, white means that they're no good. White means that the boy didn't do his job, and they will not turn into babies. And they're all white, so that's a no good. Kind of clear colored. And... Uh, what I normally feed a lot of my fish are the freeze-dried black worms, which are just the freeze-dried version of those live black worms. And you can even see on their little diagram there how the live worms would wiggle their way out of that worm feeder like we just saw in real life. All right, guys. Comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you think. And I'll be back soon with another fish room update.